Good evening, friends. The operational situation at the front by the end of February 17th. We will start with you from the Lyman direction, but we will finish with an interesting news background. Lyman direction. We talked to you on the previous broadcast that Russian troops launched a number of attacks with the support of armored vehicles. It was possible to repel most of the attacks, of course. No changes were recorded, but the remark was that the enemy continues to push. Unfortunately, there are changes in the evening. The enemy still managed to advance along not only Yarrow, Laptev, but also north of it, to the center of the beam round advance. It means that here the enemy has advanced to a depth of up to 400 meters on a front section, up to 1 and 9 kilometers wide. Active hostilities continue. Well, actually, as in the previous broadcast, we end up in this direction with the fact that the enemy presses further. That is, despite the attempts that were repulsed, a failed series of attempts on the part of the Russian troops, and so it was undertaken. Nevertheless, they do not give up these attempts, and, based on the vector and the course, based on the concentration of forces, they will continue to put pressure on this direction. The main goal I repeat for new viewers, is to go out along the cascade of stakes, well of course along the river, roughly speaking, from the capture of Makievka to the capture of part of the settlement of Torskaya. This is what the Russian troops are planning on this sector of the front. Somewhere it is possible to counterattack, even pushed back, but the situation is quite complicated. Today, by the way, fighters from the field also reported that the situation in the Serebriansky forest is not as easy as many imagine. Because we talk a lot for the Serebriansky forest about the fact that there are no changes here, but at the same time, we make a remark that heavy fighting continues and actually the enemy is very pressing and his main goal is just the same exhaustion. To which, of course, there are reports from RFU fighters that Russian troops are not reducing pressure on this sector of the front. In other words, the main goal is to advance to the Seversky Donetsk River. We do not record any significant changes in the Bakhmut direction by the end of the day. The main fighting continues, I would say, in the area of the Popovsky forest, but this is conditional. Not in the direction of the city of an hour in the Yar, but more in the direction of Ivanovo. A number of fresh shots have been published today. So we'll start with the Popovsky forest. There were statements from our fighters directly from the field that they were pressing on the flank south of Bogdanovka, making attempts. These attempts remain by the end of the day and active hostilities continue in the area of the Popovsky forest. The enemy is trying to enter its western part, but here the situation is quite dynamic and remains in the grey red zone. In the link, the contour is attacked, because for the enemy this is an extremely important area. In order to further advance in the direction of the hour in the Yara, and at the same time, I said that there is more vector in the direction of Ivanovsky. Why? And so they are, because fresh footage has been published, Active hostilities are observed in our neighboring landings, south of the Popovsky forest, including close-range shooting battles. In other words, the enemy is conducting assault operations, and the main goal, as we said on previous broadcasts with you, is to approach the positions north of Ivanovskoy in order to try to carry out a series of assault actions of the most populated riot, but not only in the Easterners it was before, but also from the north. Therefore, active hostilities continue within the gray zone, and at the junction with the red zone of the neighboring landing, south of the Popovsky forest. We turn to the Avdiivka direction, on the situation in the city. The situation has already been adjusted, based on the data that is available by the end of the day. So, what I published in my telegram, the enemy, as you remember, planted his flag on one of the buildings. So Avdiivsky as Sohim, and at the end of the day, Avdiivsky as Sohim, completely came under the control of the enemy. At the same time, active hostilities continue in the Stepovoy area, and it is assumed that the enemy is likely to increase pressure on the Afu positions in the near future. That is, Russian troops will not only attack from the Krasnogorovka area, in the direction of the typical, from the area of the Tachmash Garden Association under. It means that they will try to move to its northern part, but also from Avdivsky, of course, as a Sahim. Because before we had very heavy battles within two intersections, as you remember, the Russian troops managed to advance somewhere earlier. Then the 47th Brigade managed to push them somewhere, 
knock them out from a number of positions, return a number of positions. But then there was a very important point, which the enemy actually complained about, and his drones showed these records, that Bradley BMP Bradley left the territory of Avdivsky as a Sahim, and fired at them, both in the area of the intersection, from where they managed to knock them out before, and at the position where they were held at the fence. It means, of course, that there is no flank strike now, and the enemy is definitely trying offensive actions on a typical one in the near future, but only a little bit, I would say, with a wider coverage. Not a little bit, but a wider coverage than it was before. Moving on, Swala. The fighting continues, I would say, by the end of the day, more of a positional nature, but here, in fact, the enemy is also putting very serious pressure on the settlement itself. Naturally, for the time being, this situation remains quite difficult for us. He will also try to improve his tactical position in the neighboring areas, i.d. est west of Avdiivka, and on the western flank. Therefore, active hostilities are taking place in the eastern Swallow village and the chemist micro district. Today, flags were also set up there for a number of buildings. Well, the enemy occupied the entire area. Naturally, by the end of the day, its cleaning continues, and the enemy has something to work on there, so it cannot be said that he will be the same mass that attacked before, conduct offensive actions, but still, still makes further attempts, albeit with smaller forces, smaller forces in the western direction of the ninth quarter, and also to attack conditionally on the southern outskirts of the bad beam. By the end of the day, the situation looks like this. It means that they occupied a number of strongholds that we had between Zenit and the chemist's microdistrict, about which we said yesterday that there was a vector of attacks from the south to the north, and accordingly, one of the mainstays, which for a long time did not give them rest. Between Opitni and Vodian northeast, northwest of the settlements. There is also an opponent present, and of course, there are attacks from the Russian troops now, also on the northern thin, the concentration of forces, although less, but still the enemy is making these attempts. Therefore, we continue fighting in the Avdiivka direction. There are a number of reports that Russian troops can continue the assault operations. Use them so that we have already talked to you for a typical, for swallows to the north. But he will try to go there conditionally in an arc from the north, yes, Burdick. So the settlement, that is a completely flanking position to the west, in a day. And take to ensure her safety, stability in the future. Stability from counterattacks from Duryug and so on, and so on. Therefore, naturally, yes, it will make attempts to improve tactical positions in the near future. We will keep you informed, as they say, no new information has been received for tonight. Moving on. Near Novelsky, active hostilities continue between Novelsky and Pervomaisky. We do not record any significant changes in this sector of the front as well as by the end of the day, in the Kurikovsky direction, and the South Donetsk sector of the front. Today, there was also a lot of information during the day, I would say, after lunch it began, about the Zaporozhye section of the Orkhov direction front, that the enemy had moved to offensive actions. This is really true. This means, that the information comes a little late, but about the same as it was, it's about three to three and a half hours ago. It means that Russian troops in armored vehicles attempted to attack the work from the south, but they report that there were several attack vectors there. This is one of the attacks. It means that according to preliminary information, up to four armored vehicles were attacked, destroyed, that is, all this is being clarified further, because this is preliminary data from the fighters from the place that they reported. But again, I repeat, with a delay and four small changes. So, the footage was published, we recently just added a yellow zone near the fortifications of the area where the Apu was already present. Then there was footage from a Russian drone, confirming the presence, and we moved this area to yellow. Well, today, 
fresh footage was published that the enemy infantry, the enemy infantry went into the trenches then. Well, and accordingly, shots of fire damage in the PV by a drone were published. But this, I repeat, is the situation that three, three and a half hours ago. As it unfolds further, it is difficult to say yet, because there were a number of reports after the fact that the enemy, I repeat again, was not only south of Workin, respectively, attacked from several other sites, but it was all west of Workin, made attempts to attack. The result of the battle is already, of course, being clarified. According to the changes, a small section of the grey zone has been added, active fighting continues. So, in this sector of the front, there is, of course, a number of misinformation. In the near future, it will definitely arrive, so as they say, we will look. But the fact that the enemy therefore uses tactical aviation here, it also means that they were asked to comment, because we have been saying a lot with you, that if they capture Avdiivka, Russian troops, they will definitely transfer some part of tactical aviation, that is, there will be more serious activity on the same site. Saporozhi direction. Therefore, there is information that it was really used in Zaporozhi. Part of this tactical aviation is in the Zaporozhi direction, the Orkov direction. So, there were also reports that three Russian dryers were shot down today. In any case, we will make an official statement with this remark from our side, from the Afu side, three, from the enemy side, from the Russian military officers, it is reported that exactly one was shot down. Therefore, there is such information anyway. Well, in any case, I think so. Within five days, as in previous periods, there will be a clearer picture, they recognize. They do not recognize, the information will be confirmed, it will not be, but this is already. But then we leave it. The fact remains, that on the part of the Ifu, naturally, the frontline air defense also works, and they understood perfectly well that, yes, Russian troops will use tactical aviation in this sector of the front. Well, if specifically, we are not talking about missile airstrikes, but about aerial bombs, on which the Russian side has a very big stake. There were also reports of attacks to the west and northwest of the village of Verbovoya, and again, to the west of work. And there was some activity, but the fighting continues. It's too early to talk about anything here. As for the recruitment, there were reports that the attacks were repelled, so we do not record any changes. Well, there were also no visual changes in the drone footage, so that it was possible to advance somewhere. We move on to the markets. We do not fix any changes. Fighting continues. They asked us to comment, because again we haven't said anything for the last few broadcasts, but in fact, there are positional fighting. It's too early to talk about anything yet. This is the situation we have by the end of today, the 17th of February at the front.